All right, so this is lecture number nine, 313 Signals and Systems. So I'm going to do my best to uh, record this lecture today, and then I'm going to conduct a poll to see if you prefer having the recorded lecture plus extra problems, or if you prefer the, the TA to give uh, the lecture in the future. As a preview, uh, first I'm going to introduce differential equations, which uh, of course you've seen before, and go through a couple examples of differential equations in the context of electrical engineering. And then we're going to get to the main topic at hand, which is solving a continuous time differential equation the 313 way, which is going to involve determining the homogeneous solution, finding the impulse response, and then determining the particular solution for a given input signal. And the total solution will be a, a sum of the homogeneous and particular solutions. All right, so introduction to continuous time systems as differential equations. So for this part of the lecture, you should be able to define linear constant coefficient differential equation and then formulate these equations for circuits problems. So many systems in engineering are defined by differential equations. So, and in particular, um, linear constant coefficient differential equations are especially important and they're connected to linear time invariant systems. So some of the example systems that you might see in your engineering career, uh, circuits, RLC, circuits and filters, mechanical systems, heat transfer, chemical systems, um, and many more are described using differential equations. So as a simple example of a linear constant coefficient differential equation, consider the following here. So we've got an equation in terms of x of t, which is I'm calling the input, and y of t, which I'm calling the output. And the equation has both the input and output and the derivatives in it. And that makes it a differential equation. And it's called linear constant coefficient because the coefficients multiplying the outputs and the derivatives and the inputs and the derivatives are all constant. So a linear constant coefficient differential equation can be used to describe a system. And so what I mean here is that there's an input um, and an output, and they're related through the differential equation as the example on the previous slide here. And so solving the differential equation, what that amounts to is determining a formula for the output that depends on the input and the system parameters, which in this case is A0, A1, B0, and B1. So here are some circuit examples here. So this is the RC low-pass filter, and so you derive this um, in some previous courses where the output voltage is divided among the voltage across the resistor and the voltage across the capacitor. And this gives the following equation for the output voltage, the capacitance voltage, and the derivative of the capacitance voltage. Okay, so I wanted to go through and give a quick derivation of the differential equation for these different circuits here. So here's a low-pass filter here, and remember from the uh, properties of a capacitor that the current in the circuit here, I of t, is equal to C D the C of t dt. And then if this is the current I of t, then the voltage across the resistor has to be I of t times R. And then um, substituting in for the current, that gives us RC to VC of t dt. So therefore, we can write Vs of t is equal to Vr of t plus Vc of t, which is equal to Rc d Vc of t dt plus Vc of t, which is the equation that we had on this slide. Which is the Rc high pass filter with, for example, RC high pass, yeah, RC high pass filter, 
Okay, so now I'm going to go for driving the RC high pass filter here. So here we're going to take the output at VR of t. And so we want to find a differential equation in terms of VR and Vs of t here, which is the input. So first of all, let's um, go through here and realize that vr of t is equal to i of t times r and that we have um, i of t is equal to c dv c of t dt which means that v c of t is equal to The integral of i of t dt divided by c. And then we want everything here in terms of v of r, so we can plug that in and get the, this is the integral of um, v r of t dt divided by rc. So now we have an equation which is an integral equation, and we're going to have v r of t plus the integral of vr of t over r of c is equal to vs of t. But because we're studying differential equations in the class, we want to have this in terms of derivatives. So we take the derivative of both sides, multiply through by rc. So we get rc d vr of t dt plus vr of t is equal to rc d v s of t dt. And so this is the key equation here from the slide. And then an RLC circuit, in this case with um, an AC input. And so the AC input is reflected here in the voltage times the sine, which becomes a cosine here. Okay, so I'm going to derive the RLC formula here. So we have the input voltage V naught sine of omega t. So we want to solve, write an equation that's a function of the current in the system. So the voltage across the resistor is going to be I of t times R. The voltage across the inductor is going to be L the I of t dt. And the voltage across the capacitor is 1 over C the integral from i of tau d tau. Now to make this match the slide, so we're assuming that we are applying the input at zero, so the capacitor is integrating from zero to t and is associated with an initial voltage condition. And this is equal to V naught sine of omega of t. Now to find this in terms of all derivatives, we take the derivative of every term. So we get the following here. So di of t over dt times r plus l d squared i of t dt squared plus 1 over c i of t. The derivative of that constant is 0 and that's going to be equal to v0 times the cosine of omega t. And so now we have an equation here that's a function of the current the second order differential equation so we given the initial conditions we could solve this equation here for uh, the current. So you've seen differential equations before and other in your circuits courses here but they also uh, you'll see them other places too if you take electromagnetics and Maxwell's equations and and so in these cases the differential equation results from the mathematical fundamentals it's it's like our description of reality but we also use differential equations as a model to observe phenomena. So for example, attenuation on a wire cable, wireless propagation channels, spectrum utilization, uh, control systems are examples. And so here, what's happening is that the reality may not be exactly described by a differential equation. So we build a model of reality that is described by a differential equation and try to pick the parameters so that the model matches reality as close as possible. And so a typical modeling problem is as follows. So there's a 
for example, you might have a known input that goes into a system that could be a result of nature or something very complicated, and you measure the output y of t. And a typical modeling problem would, we would ask the question, what would be the, the coefficients of the linear constant coefficient differential equation that when I put in x of t and get out of the model y bar of t, that the model output and the measured output are very close. And we use this all the time in wireless. For example, the true system might be the propagation channel, and the differential equation might be the model of the propagation channel. We use the model to equalize and recover the data. And so the summary here is that even if you have a system that isn't described by a differential equation, in many cases you can find a model that is described by the differential equation, and that may be good enough to use. So why differential equations, linear constant coefficient differential equations as models? Well, um, they can describe a range of phenomena. With okay, so now we're going to go through solutions to differential equations. And this is going to involve computing the zero input impulse response and particular solutions. So general linear constant coefficient differential equation relating the input output may be written as follows here. So you've got coefficient a of n multiplying the nth derivative of y plus a of n minus 1 multiplying the n minus 1th derivative of y all the way down to a0 times y of t. So note that there are n plus 1 coefficients on the left hand side of this equation. And the coefficients here are related to what's called the state polynomial. The right hand side contains our input as a function of derivatives of x of t. And so there's m of them and a total of m plus 1 coefficients. And the coefficients, the b's, are related to what's called the input polynomial. And between the two, the output, the state polynomial, is the one that is more important. Now, the order of the differential equation is the maximum of n and m. So it's the highest order derivative. And so in 313, um, frankly, most of the examples are n is equal to 1 or 2. And typically, m is equal to 0, but sometimes m can be 1 or 2 also. Now, in what follows here, I'm going to go through the specific 313 solution to solving this kind of differential equation. And I'm assuming that you've had differential equations, so I'm not going to teach that from first principles. So let's look at the general solution of a differential equation. So linear constant coefficient differential equation. So first of all, um, we can break down the solution y of t into two pieces. The first y h of t is the natural or homogeneous or zero input response. And this is the solution where there's no input. And it's only a function of initial conditions and doesn't depend on the input or the input polynomial. And so initial conditions are values of the output at certain times. So for example, we might know that y at t naught is equal to a zero and the derivative of y at t naught is equal to a1. So these are exa examples of initial conditions. Now the particular or driven or zero state response is the solution when the initial conditions are set to zero. And so as a result, it doesn't depend on the initial conditions. It only depends on the response of the system to the input. And so the total solution to the differential equation is the sum of these two responses. So the recipe that we're going to use for solving these kinds of equations as follows. Now I realize that this recipe may be different than what you learned, which is why we're spending a whole lecture on it. So the, the recipe is as follows. We're going to find the homogeneous response. We're going to find the impulse response. And then we're going to find the particular solution and combine them all together to get the total solution. So there's essentially four steps here, each step potentially involving multiple sub-steps. So let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so step one, finding the homogeneous response. Well, what we need to do here is determine what's called the characteristic polynomial, which is given by Q of lambda is a n lambda to the n plus a n minus one lambda to the n minus one, all the way down to a zero. So effectively, you take the derivatives and you replace them with some variable, let's say lambda. And so now we have a polynomial that's a function of lambda. And there's n plus 1 coefficients, and it's an nth order polynomial, so it has n roots. 
and the non-repeated roots. So these are the roots here, so lambda 1 through lambda n. Now, when what you do with the roots depends on if the roots repeat or not. So a non-repeated root is a root that doesn't repeat. And if they don't repeat, they have what's called a characteristic mode of the form, a constant times e to the lambda of t. So this is a function that contains the root here. And this c is a constant that we'll solve for using the initial conditions. Now repeated real roots have a characteristic mode of the form here. So suppose that this is repeated r times. Then we have a constant plus a constant times time plus dot 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 times e to the lambda t. So this is if the first mode is repeated r times, then there's a, a mode of this here. So the sorry, sorry, lambda one, the root lambda one is repeated, then the characteristic mode has the following form. And then finally, assuming the differential equation is real, then the complex roots come in pairs. So if you have lambda one, then you also have, which is alpha plus j beta, then you also have lambda 2, which is alpha minus j beta. And the characteristic mode comes in the form of e to the j theta, c times e to the j theta, and can also be written in the form of e to the alpha t times cos of beta of t plus theta. So note that there's a c and a theta here that are unknown or equivalently a, uh, a c and a theta over here. So the alpha and the beta are determined from the roots. So what you do is the homogeneous solution is gonna be the sum of the contributions of each mode. So if you have one mode, the solution would have the form of ck e to the, e to the lambda t. If you had repeated roots, it would have this form here. And then if you had complex roots, they would come in pairs like this. And if you had multiple roots, then you'd have linear combinations of these three modes here. So as an example, um, for real and distinct roots, the solution would look like here. So suppose we have, you know, nth order equations, we have n plus one coefficients and roots, then the general solution would be y of t is equal to c1 e to the lambda t plus dot 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 cn e to the lambda t. So this is what the homogeneous solution looks like. So the things that are unknown at this point are the coefficients. So we solve for those using the initial conditions. So for example, initial condition might be that we have the derivative at t naught is equal to a. And typically that derivative is at zero, the time value is at zero. The first derivative is equal to a one down through the nth minus one derivative is equal to a n minus one. So you have n unknown coefficients, so you only need n initial conditions. If you, so that's all you need. And these initial conditions would have to be given to you, or you'd have to make otherwise some assumption about them. So we're going to go through, in this lecture, an example. We're going to go through this example um, and, key, and build on it in each of the different steps here. So consider a first order differential equation. So it's d dt of y plus 2y of t is equal to x of t. So let's find the zero input, input, zero input response given y zero is equal to two. So this is the initial uh, condition. So first we solve the characteristic equation where lambda plus, uh, lambda plus uh, two is equal to zero. So we find the roots of this polynomial. Find the characteristic root is minus two. Characteristic mode is c e to the minus two t. Solve for the unknown constant. So by plugging in, so for t is equal to zero, we get y h of zero is equal to two. So put zero there, it becomes c. So therefore c is equal to two, and the homogeneous solution is y h of t equals two e to the minus two t. Now note here that this initial condition is used to find the homogeneous solution, so we use that for y h of down here. And this is, makes sense because this is the zero input response, so in that case, y of zero is also equal to y h of zero. So that's the homogeneous solution. So now let's go to the second step here, calculating the impulse response. So it turns out that linear constant coefficient differential equation has an impulse response. And this is represented in this formula here. This formula is actually derived in the Lati book which we're not using and so you're not going to need to know the derivation but you will need to know this formula and so 
you might want to use this on your crib sheet in the midterm. So the, the impulse response as follows. So this first term here is an impulse, delta, which is the ratio of B of N to alpha of N. And then the subsequent terms here are, this is one over an A of N, is B of N times the derivatives of Y N of T, which is often called the natural response. But note that the derivatives are multiplied by B, which were the um, input polynomials here. And then the, finally, that whole sum is multiplied by the unit step function. So this is a bit complicated, but you need to remember that here. Now, this is a function of the y n of t. So y n of t looks like the homogeneous response or zero input response, except that we solve for it using this set of initial conditions, where everything is equal to zero except the n minus one coefficient here. Now, this form is assuming that m is less than or equal to n. And if m was bigger than n, there would be a different form, but we don't use that in this class. So let's go back to our example here. So let's find the impulse response. So here's the form of the natural response. That's the same as the homogeneous response. We solve for the unknown coefficient, y0 is equal to 1. That comes from the previous slide here. See that right there. Now let's keep going. We plug in, so that gives us c is equal to 1. So therefore the natural response is e to the minus 2t. And using that equation, h of t is equal to e to the minus 2t times u of t. So that's the impulse response. This is the impulse response of our first order linear constant coefficient differential equation. So to find the particular solution, here's where convolution comes in. The particular solution is the convolution of the impulse response and the input. So that's it. And then finally, the total solution is the sum of the homogeneous and particular solutions. So now let's continue back with our example here. So let's, let's find the particular solution assuming the input is e to the 3t u of t. Well, basically what we need to do here is a convolution. So we write h of t convolved with x of t. So this is the convolution formula. e to the minus 2 tau u of tau e to the 3 t minus tau u of t minus tau. And substituting here, so we're pulling out the um, e to the 3 t, which doesn't depend on tau over here. And they're combining e to the minus 2, t, 2 tau and e to the minus 3 tau here and e to the minus 5 tau. We have the integral of u of tau, u of t minus tau. So we want to get rid of the unit step functions. So it's easiest to get rid of this one first. So now we're integrating from zero to infinity. And now we have to determine, okay, where is t minus tau? So this force, so u of t minus tau has to be non-zero for this to be non-zero. So t, we're looking for the place where t minus tau is greater than or equal to zero. And that gives us, if t is greater than 0, the integral from 0 to tau, e to the minus 5 tau, d tau, otherwise 0, which we can write using the unit step form here. So that's the convolution. This is similar to ones that we've done in class before. So now we have that same differential equation. And so let's now find the total solution. So total solution is given this input here, and y is 0, 2. And that's the initial condition. And so we add the homogeneous response, e to the minus 2t, plus the particular solution, 1 fifth e to the 3t u of t, minus 1 fifth e to the minus 2t u of t here. So looking at this here, um, let's go back to the previous slide here. So e to the 3t minus e to the, it's going to be minus 2t. So this is the homogeneous part. This is the particular solution. So this is the total solution here. Now I want to warn you, and if maybe you took um, you know, the class previously and you're retaking 313, that sometimes some books include a unit step response for the homogeneous response. But um, you know, technically, that, that wouldn't be correct here. Uh, but this is the approach that we're going to take in this class. OK, so that's the main example here. Now what I'm going to do in the rest of the lectures, I'm going to step through this second example, and uh, then you can you know, go through it also in your spare time 
to, uh, to work out the details here. So now we have a, a first order differential equation, but we also have a derivative of the input here. So we have the same initial condition and the same input. So the homogeneous solution is the same as example one, and that makes sense because the input is zero for the homogeneous solution. So now let's go through the example here. So the characteristic polynomial we solve for lambda is equal to two, lambda plus two. We find that root, it's equal to minus two. So the characteristic mode is either minus two t. So here's the homogeneous response. Yh is equal to either minus two t. So now we, so we just did that. Now let's find the impulse response. This is the formula here, so we have to find y of n, but we already did this in the first example, so we know that y of n is e to the minus 2t. But now here, the tricky thing is we have derivatives. So now plugging in to the, deri to the derivative formula, so we have 2 over 1 goes here, and then these are the coefficients of the, the derivative here. So note that b0 is 1, and b1 is 2, so let's check that here. So we have a 1 here and a 2 here. So the higher order coefficients in front of the derivatives. So that's why we had the um, that's why we had the 2 here. And so we have to differentiate e to the minus 2t. So that's minus 2 e to the minus 2t. And simplifying all the math. The impulse response is 2 delta of t minus 3 e to the minus 2t. So the main thing to note here is that because of the presence of those derivatives of the input, the impulse response is different. And so now when we do the convolution as part of the particular solution, we get a new answer. So we convolve these two together, so we got 2 delta of t minus 3, three halves e to the minus 2 t minus tau u of t minus tau d tau. So this is the convolution here. And then uh, distributing the integral and using the delta property, this is 2 e to the 3t u of t, and then minus the 3 halves integral from e to the 3 tau, etc. here. But we already computed this, so we can plug that solution in, except we have the 3 halves. Multiplying out, we get 2 e to the 3t u of t minus 3 tenths e to the 3t minus e to the minus 2t u of t. So to simplify this problem, we're just using what we already computed in example one, but if you didn't have that, you'd have to compute that again yourself here. So, and then finally adding everything up gives us the total solution of 2 e to the minus 2t, 2 e to the 3t u of t, minus 3 tenths e to the 3t e to the minus 2t u of t. So that's the total solution. So I went through this a bit quickly, but I'd encourage you to go through and you know, try this example out yourself and make sure you can do it. In particular, finding the impulse response, that's the, the hardest part of this problem. Now I'm going to conclude here with just a comment here on when does a linear constant coefficient differential equation describe an LTI system? Well, it turns out that it, it's required that the initial conditions are zero. And this makes sense because the particular solution is the convolution between the input and the impulse response. And so if you have a non-zero homogeneous part, then linearity is, is clearly not satisfied because that can't be represented with a convolution. So we say that the system must be at rest, and that's why this is highlighted here in purple. So if you have a system described by a linear constant coefficient differential equation and the system is at rest, then it is also a linear time invariant system. And you can compute the output by convolving with the impulse response, which is determined from the coefficients of the system. So this is important, and you need to remember that. And some of the other classes that are taught at UT, they tend to confuse both of these together. But you can find examples of linear time invariant systems which are not described by differential equations. So differential equation can be an LTI system, and an LTI system can be described by differential equation. Okay, to summarize, linear constant coefficient differential equations are widely used to describe systems and models. Solving the equation involves, linear constant coefficient differential equation involves determining the homogeneous solution, given initial conditions, determining the impulse response, and then the particular solution given an input signal. And then a system described by a linear constant coefficient differential equation is also LTI if the system is at rest, meaning that the initial conditions are zero.